Good evening, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, all over the earth, wherever you might be right now. I'm glad that actually I'm back here in Sydney, Australia, and with all the congregation here that we have here in this room tonight, and also for all the people who will be listening, uh, as we, as I started uh, the last two weeks, I did two sessions in Albania, and with the brothers uh, and sisters over there. Who are we in glory to God is a teaching that we are going to be talking about tonight. And as I said, we've already done two sessions, and tonight we are on session three. In the session one, we spoke about the offices of God which are the offices of God, the five offices of God, the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the pastors and the evangelists. And also we spoke about that we have chosen from God in glory to God and given us authority, we spoke about, I spoke about authority, this Jesus, as Jesus left to give to go to heaven, he gave all his authority on earth here to his body. And many, many Christians, every time they pray, they, give the authority, they ask Jesus to do something. And Jesus says, well, you're my body. Why don't you pray? Why don't you do something about it? So that was session one. And I encourage you, if you haven't listened to the session one, to go through YouTube under George Andrews and Glory to God and listen to that teaching, session one. In session two, we spoke about how should we as children of God function? How should the body of Christ function? And about the five offices and about the nine gifts in the spirit that God is giving to his body, Jesus is giving his body to function perfectly. <coughs> And again, it's on session two, we spoke about that if we work in, you know, if it's, it's important that we walk in the spirit, because if we don't work, as it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 13, if we don't walk in the spirit and walk in the flesh, we will die, spiritually we will die. So I spoke about that in session two. In tonight's session, session three, we're going to look at about, we're going to, we, well, I'm going to talk about, we're going to talk about tonight how the first church operated. My heart desire has always been for, for glory to God to be as the first church was. Back to that. Back to the beginning. And also, what, how the church operated under the leadership of the apostles, and especially Jesus, the apostle Peter started first, and he is the one as Jesus anointed, and then from the apostle Peter is coming the apostle Paul. So, And how can we also operate under the same power? Again, in, there's so many different teachings out, out there in the world. And people say this and say that and say that. But, um, you know, the Bible t tells us, and I want us to go to the scripture in Hebrew 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So why am I showing you this scripture? And there's a couple more scriptures if you have time to look into it. It's Malachi 
3, 3, chapter 3 verse 6 and also Romans 11 29. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. So as it was in the first church, it is today. It's not like, uh, who are you? I am a, a senior pastor. And I, and as we have here, also a brother from Africa here as well in our congregation tonight. In Africa, every person is a pastor. Every person who walks to the Bible already is a pastor. No, 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 no. Not everybody is a pastor. It's a special gift God's putting in a pastor to be able to stroke the ship and to, to look after the, the congregation. There are five offices and there's nine gifts in the Spirit as I spoke to the last two teachings. Now, and now we're going to talk about to as what happened as all the believers, Jesus left and he promised that I will send the Holy Spirit. He will send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, to teach us in all things. And as all the believers, they were there winding up, up on the upper room. They, they received, the Bible says, they received power. So let's go to Exodus, the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8. What happened to that time when all the believers were waiting for? And he says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witness to, to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Jesus said, I'm going to be going, but when the Holy Spirit comes, you will receive power. And you should be a witness. You should be witness in Jerusalem. You should be witness in Sydney. You should be witness in Albania and Tirana. You should be witness in Athens. You should be you witness in, in Johannesburg. You should be witness everywhere in the world. For all of us, whoever you might be, every one of us should be a witness as the Holy Spirit comes upon you. We're going to go to about the Holy Spirit and how many of us have the Holy Spirit in it. But let's know, let's talk about now to the next scripture which is in Exodus the Apostles chapter 2 verse 4. What happened to the first believers? As I said, all the first believers that were there waiting for the promise of the Holy Spirit. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and became to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Fire came from heaven like tongues of fire and then it was separated and then each person on that room was filled with the Holy Spirit. And they were all became to speak in other tongues. It didn't say here some, it said all. And I know the Bible talks also in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 8 to 28 about that it's a gift. Speaking in tongues, it's also a gift. But I personally believe if you're hungry, God will fill you. He can give you the gift the same way he gave me the gift. And many times the Holy Spirit told me, go and lay hands on this person. And I lay hands on the person and start speaking in tongues right away. Because God wants to give us power. 
God wants to give us authority to move in the power of the Holy Spirit. Christ is the head of the church and he knows how to distribute his gifts of the Spirit to his body. So let's also read from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 and 12. And himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. It's important for the church today to have the five offices and the nine gifts in the Spirit. And as I said to you before, this is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Today, it's not just pastors and some evangelists and some teachers. There are also the prophets, there's also the apostles as well. So, I personally, myself, for that body that we are, that I am leading of glory to God, I want, my heart desire is to have, to see a glorious body functioning with all the gifts and spirit working in harmony together. Five offices, nine gifts and spirit. So when this body works perfectly, then Jesus Christ himself becomes the head. And then there is no demon on earth or hell can come against this body ever. Nothing can stop this body. But the enemy has managed through deception and through lies. And again, I already spoke a lot of it in the first session and second, second session about the importance how the body should function. And how one another should love one another and walk in harmony. And how by talking better about somebody in the body or, or gossiping about somebody in the body, you harmony even yourself. I even met it. I actually show like that it's like you're having a knife and you, you, you step in yourself, in your own body. So. If you want to really know how much it hurts, just, don't, I'm not asking you to stab yourself, but feel the pain it is by hurting someone else. The enemy has been defeated by Jesus Christ. Colossians 2.15, this is a clear. But we, the body of Christ. So let's see what Peter did. After they were all filled, filled with the Holy Spirit, and the people were saying, they all came from everywhere looking to see what happened. Some they said, oh, they had too much wine, they would got drunk. But there was the power of God in action. And the Apostle Peter, as we go to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 44. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. He preached the gospel. And the power of God, the Holy Spirit, fell up in all of those people who listened to the word. And many people that day were saved. Thousands of people got saved on that day.
Can it? <clears throat> and from there, we see that if we go to the next scripture, we see the manifesting of the Spirit also when you see Philip who went to Samaria. And Philip had the gift of an, of, a, of an evangelist, but he also had the gift operating in miraculous power because he was the Holy Spirit took him from one place to another, supernaturally. The same concern that God had then for the people and how he, through Philip, saved the eunuch from Ethiopia and the others who heard the message. The same thing happens is today. God is concerned, He's concerned about His people. He doesn't want no one to perish, but everybody to come to repentance and salvation. So let's also go to Exodus the Apostles chapter 8, verse 4 to 8. Therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip was down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitude, with one accord, heard the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles by which he did. For I clean spirits crying with a loud voice come out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lying were healed. And there was a great joy in the city. Here we see also the gift of the spirit of the evangelist and the supernatural power also. God used Philip to touch all these people and change all these people's lives. And that's what I want to see in us and glory to God. I want to see, as I said before, this glorious body moving in power, in the power of the Holy Spirit. teaching us also to eagerly desire the greater gifts. If you look at, we're not going to go to the scripture, but the scripture is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 31. That's where it finishes with the gifts of the Spirit and the offices of the Spirit. And then the last thing he talks about is to, greater, to eagerly desire the greater gifts. Desire the greater gifts. Not to be like Simon when Philip was preaching, he wanted to buy the gifts of the Holy Spirit. No. We desire the greater gifts because we want to help the body of Christ and we want to help the people on this earth. So, you can pray, and you can ask God to show you, but even yourself, you can pray, and pray, and say, Lord, I want this gift. I want this gift in the Spirit. I want this office. Is it possible? Because, again, God is preparing a lot of us, and He's preparing, I know from myself, He, he started preparing me from the day that I was born, for today. 65 years later and still preparing me. So the bigger 
callings in the bigger offices, it's a lot of work and not everybody can do those. But there are so many other gifts you can ask for in the spirit. And we prepare to walk the walk and talk the talk. And you want this gift because you want to bless the body of Christ. That has to be the only reason why you want a greater gift. So you can go through from 1 Corinthians 12 verse 8. It talks about the five gifts in the Spirit. I spoke about on last teaching about the nine gifts in the Spirit and the five offices. So I don't want to go back and preach the same thing that I preached last week. Now, how many, how many of you believe that we are in the last days? We all believe that, right? And God says, I will pour out my spirit in all flesh, in all people. So there's two scriptures that I want us to go to. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 2, verse 17. It shall come to pass in the last day, it says God. I will pour all, I will pour air off my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. God's desire is to pour his spirit in all flesh. And I was, years ago, that I was part of the second church that I was part of. And I remember that night, the pastor of the church was talking about, Lord, 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 bring revival. And the spirit of God inside me was bubble like this and in the end I, I, I took the microphone off. and as I took the microphone I said the revival is here and it's now the revival is in every every believer's heart if you're on fire for God and there's ten of us on fire for God and you put those ten logs together the fire of that ten people together who are fire for God will be explosion. And I remember as I spoke those words, people were falling everywhere in the church by the power of the Holy Spirit. Boom, 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 everywhere. The fire has to be in your heart. God looking for people who are, they love Him and they are fire for Him. The, scripture, the, second, the second scripture is also in John chapter 2, verse 2, 28 to 32, as we know. And this came from there in the Acts of the Apostles 2 17. So we're not going to go there. God wants to pour His Holy Spirit, and He's going to do it in the last days now because He wants to get His many people saved before they return with Jesus. In other words, God is going to help us a lot because we are really not doing the job He says for us to do. But I want to ask you some questions now. There are so many different religions everywhere. Even in Christianity. But I'm going to talk to you about three baptisms.
First baptism. Are you, bapti are you baptized into Christ? In other words, it was a time of your life that you actually co commit your life to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, you I want you to become my Lord and Savior and save me from all my sin. Not because you're born, I was born in a Christian family orthodox. But I wasn't a Christian. I got saved at the age of 42. Other people, they were born in a Catholic church. Other people were born in other religions, Hindus, Islam, so many different religions. Started. But there's only one Savior. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through me. Some people say, no, that's not true. But I have lived that truth. When he came to my life, my whole life was changed and upside down. I knew when something happened to my life. So I'm telling you now, 100% sure that you need to be, number one, baptized into Christ. Number two, Baptism, water, or Holy Spirit. I got baptized first in the Holy Spirit and then in the water. But can be first in the water and then in the Holy Spirit. You need all three baptisms. And when I went and got baptized in Jordan River in, in, in Israel, nobody taught me really, we have, who, have a, who have a proper teaching in glory to God, why should you get baptized in the water? And I'm going to tell you very, very plainly, you need to decide to die to yourself. And as you die, as, and as you volunteer to die, the pastor or the person who's baptizing you puts you under the water. And as you come under the water, you die to the old self. And as you come up of the, oh, and from the water up again, you're resurrected as Jesus was resurrected. That's what the Bible says in Romans 6, verse 2 and 3. In the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you also, you yearning so much for Him. And He baptized you with the Holy Spirit and fire. You can be baptized with fire. I was baptized. With Holy Spirit and fire. I asked for it, I cried for it, I wanted it so much, and He gave it to me. Don't limit God in your life. Don't think that you know everything. The only reason that I got saved for it was because I was going to commit suicide. And I knew I was going to die, so I'm thinking to myself, maybe you, you missed something. I was a Greek man, he yeah, knew everything. Maybe you missed something. What do you got to lose? Give it a chance. And I knew zero, below zero of the word of God. So, don't limit God in your life, and whatever I tell you is the truth. If you want to be full-on Christian, you need those three baptisms.
into Christ, into the Holy Spirit, into water. To be fully, that there's nothing missing in you. And also desire the greater gift. Don't limit yourself. Don't say that, oh, the apostle was for, for the past. All the five offices and the nine gifts in the Spirit can a church have today. Because the same, this is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Nothing changes. But don't think of a title. For me, most times I want to be a servant of Christ by the will of God. I don't want to, I don't want to have no titles. Don't think I'm um, have a title. <laughs> a title means serving. Take a position and serve the body. That's what the title is for. Let's also read Romans chapter 8, verse 14. For as many are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. Don't, you know, there's so many people. I'm a child of God. Are you? Are you walking by the power of the Holy Spirit? Or are you fully walking in the flesh? Because if you read verse 13, it says, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the, by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the, of the body, you will live. You will not die physically, but you will die spiritually. That's what it means. The same way Adam and Eve died spiritually. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the Son of God. And if you go to John chapter 4, verse 24, it says, God is a Spirit, and He wants His people to worship in the Spirit and in truth. For God is a Spirit. And those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So God has a talk to us into His family through Christ. He loves us so much. He, he actually killed His own Son to save me, you and me. Because the love that He has for us. So the, most, the only thing we can do is actually really try don't limit yourself. Allow and search and read the word and have all those things <clears throat> to be a victorious Christian. Not to be limited by anything. And also, as the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, do not give the devil a foothold. Because if you give the devil a foothold, let me tell you, he's going to limit you. He's got, and God's going to lift the hands up. And He says, okay, you want the devil? Go with the devil. It's our responsibility to put the flesh under our feet. How do we do that? By being fully immersed in the power of God, in the Holy Spirit, with everything. Be part of the body of Christ, working together with the body of Christ in harmony, and do not give the devil a foothold. It comes because the minute that you give him a foothold in your life, it's like you're saying, without saying it, Mr. Devil, 
You're welcome. Come into my life and destroy me. And don't blame the devil. He's been defeated by Jesus. Yes. If you don't blame somebody, blame yourself for giving him a foothold in your life. And if you have a problem, because many people have problems, ask for help. Admit your mistakes. And say, brothers or sisters, I'm sure there's somebody in your life that can talk to you and can help you. Brother or sister, I have this problem, help me here. And come away from this deception. The first week of my salvation, in the middle of the night, the Holy Spirit will hit me like this. And to get up and show me things in my apartment who were there gift from the devil every night who get me up until I cleaned up my whole apartment and then the next thing I hear is the devil living horribly woo, like he's screaming and living because Jesus ordered him to leave because I was here still but not before I cleaned up my whole place. Was I a new creation? Well, I was. I got saved. But the Holy Spirit showed me the problems in my apartment. So I can tell you today and teach to you so you know how to walk. Now, I'm going to talk to you about in us, in glory to God, we have people who work for sky developments, people who, who work for the living water, due to the living water. But other people who are not part of glory to God, they have other jobs they work. And I want you to, to, tonight to talk to you about We are kings and we are priests. And he is, he, we need to learn how to do both. I know a lot of people, they who are pastors or part of the church, they don't want to do anything else other than doing that. And that's okay if you have people who are supporting you and are giving you money. But if, you don't, if you're in a country where there's people have no money to give you at all, as I'm being part of the place that I'm going to, Africa and Albania, places like that, they don't have money to give you. It's important that we learn to walk as kings and priests. So let's look at the scripture in um, Revelation chapter 1. One, verse five and six. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful, faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins with his own blood, and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He has given us authority to be kings and priests. So when you work at your job, whatever the job might be, you are the king. When you are at the church, or and the church is not one hour on Sunday, the church is every minute of the day, wherever you are, wherever you've been, wherever you talk to somebody, you can be also the church. We can be the kings and priests at the same time. And it's important that we all learn to walk in that identity. And this is what I'm teaching every one of you in glory to God. 
I'm doing the church tonight, but during the day today, I was busy on the building sites. I was busy, busy in the the water in the in the warehouse with the water and at the office above. Can we do both? Yes, we can do both. Is it important to do both? Yes, it is. Because if we don't work, if we don't, if we're not kings and don't work, how are we gonna survive? Unless specifically the Lord told you to do something and that only. But I myself wanted to be a pastor in the church with hundred people, and I wanted nothing else to do. But every time that I try to sell my business or try to close one of my business, God will open another one for me. He showed me a hundred times over that this is not what I want you to do. I want you to do all of it. And he even showed me things for the future, more to come. And at times, I'm saying, Lord, this is too much. But you know, most of us, don't even use them to preserve our brains. We can't do a lot more. Just we allow, we gotta allow ourselves and we gotta say to the Lord, the Holy Spirit, let your will be done in my life. Let's also go and look, Luke chapter 10, verse 27. Luke chapter 10, verse 27. So he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. This rich young man was coming to Jesus and said to him, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And Jesus told him plainly, you should love your, your, your Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. It's important that we love one another. It's important that we walk in harmony. It's important that we forgive other people who sing against us. And it's, it's important that we, if we're gonna be Christians, walk with this virtue, like love the Lord our God. And Jesus then demonstrated to this man afterwards about the Good Samaritan where they all were passing the other side of the road. Even the priest were passing to the other side of the road. But this Samaritan, when he grabbed this person who was wounded, left to die, they took him to the inn and left money there to build this person to be looked after and says, when I come back, if you owe you any more, I will buy for it. So Jesus demonstrated to this man that that is because this, they didn't know what it means to, to love. Now that is, love is sacrificial and if you want to know more, more about love, you read from 1 
Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 to 8, talks about it clearly. Because Paul, the Apostle Paul says, But let me show you another better way. In other words, you have all the gifts of the Spirit, you walk in power of the Holy Spirit, you're doing all that, but you have no love. He said, You're like a king, shout, like in Greek, is cabana. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. All you say on, but nothing. So it's important that we learn to love in love with one another. And it's important for this body to function perfectly. Because if we don't have love for our neighbor, and you can't choose some people who are good towards you. You gotta, you know, go to, God gonna send you some people who are not very good towards you. <clears throat> to show you more than anyone else the capacity of your heart. Okay? Not because God wants to attack you or because that person wants to attack you. He wants to show you that look, this person is where is the problem. This brother or sister or this stranger has a problem. Are you going to love him? Are you going to love the unlovable? That's what the scripture says. Are you going to love those who are the kind of love? That's what God wants us to do. With all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength, with all our soul. It's also, are we united in glory to God? For all the pastors and all the people of the church of glory to God, but not just the glory to God, but all the people who listen to this message and the church that you're part of, are you united in the church? Other question I want to ask you is do you see yourself? as a member of Lord to God. Because tonight I'm teaching who are we in Lord to God. It's something that you need to answer yourself. Do we walk together as one? It's important that this body of Christ to walk together as one in harmony. Together, we can do something great for God. United. Split the body, and the body is gone and destroyed. I think pretty much I'm done for tonight. I don't want to give you too much more, but as we go for session four, I want you next week when we're here again. From now until then, I want you to start thinking about because I'm going to talk about it next week. About giving. Now all of you who know me here, I hardly ever speak about that. And it's not tithing, because tithing is part of the Old Testament. And there's not one scripture in the New Testament that talks about tithing. But it's about giving. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you what the Lord has told me to do. How he showed me as a young Christian what to do, and how also showed me about some of the believers who were asking for something by they weren't getting what they were asking for because they weren't giving, <laughs> and the importance of giving. 
And of course, also the rest of it, the teaching, hopefully, I can finish next week. It's not just the, it's not a, it's not just about giving; it's other things as well. I'm going to do. But I want you to think about that about giving, because God gave you His Son and me, not just you and me. So what are we willing to do for Him? So I hope this teaching helped you tonight. I pray that the Lord this that I spoke for tonight help you to understand and I pray for all the people in glory to God especially those who been in this journey for a long time and I also want to pray I want also to those those of you who haven't heard the, the two teachings that are done in Albania in Tirana it's very important that you go back and listen to them because all of it comes together. Who are we in glory to God? And hopefully I'll finish next week everything. So God bless you all and have a blessed day and blessed night wherever you might be on this earth. Take care. Love you very much. I'm sitting in Australia. God bless you all.